Hello, everyone. Welcome to Helmer's Movie Mania Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Helmer, bringing you more cinema-related content. As you notice, it, the video is black and white again because we are doing another classic movie segment. Before we get to the film, remember, pre- please like the video, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon, get notified on all our latest cinema content. Now, with me is, of course, my cl- my everything classic movie co-host. Uh, he is a sophomore over at McAllister College. He is nicknamed, I guess in my view, the Turner Classic Maniac, Jack Darnell. Jack, how are you doing today? Hi. Good. How are you? Um, yeah, I'm excited to be here to talk about classic films. And yeah, I yeah. definitely accept that title. I, I just thought of that title. I thought it was a, <laughs> I thought it's good. It would become a reoccurring thing. But um, yeah. so yeah, so the film today is going to be Kurosawa's I- Ikaru. Now, I, I'm surprised that we both haven't seen this until until yeah. recently. I mean, uh, especially it's regarded as one of the best films on all t- of all time. On Letterboxd, is a 4.4 average, which puts it as definitely one of the uh, high, highest rated films on Letterbox, and so I'm uh, really excited. I'll let you go. I'll let you have the pleasure of going first. What are okay. your thoughts on Ikaru? Yeah, so I was really shocked by this film, honestly, because I think like I have this image of what a Kurosawa film is. Like it's very like loud, very energetic, very um, has a lot of emotion. And I was really shocked by like the tone of this film, um, its structure almost as well. That like it was very slow, very reflective, very solemn, very subdued. Um, you know, and there's like, there's not like just Shimura Mufune running around screaming his head off or anything like that. It's, it's, uh, you have Shimura, um, another big, uh, another Kurosawa regular. And he's really, like, he's just walking around. He's, he's thinking, there's not a lot of dialogue, um, as a, not like a lot of like screaming as much as, so much as you feel like the energy that's exploding, especially in Kurosawa's films. It's very, like, it's very controlled. And that really shocked me because I just, I didn't know Kurosawa could be that, like, uh, subtle and that gentle. Um, and I think it works very well for this topic specifically because it's such a existential um, examination of a person in anyone's life. And I just found it a really beautiful film. Um, I'm still like reflecting on it because it has a lot mm-hmm. to think about and how like you, of course, is a film that you to, when you watch it, you're like, how does that apply to my own life? And uh, what can I take away from that? And I really love films that do that. And I think Kurosawa did it with a precision that's really, um, really just, so precise in its uh, execution. I just, yeah, like I really came away just like, because I at first I was like, I don't know how to film this film um, when I finished it, because it was it was really just, it had such a like a subtle command over me, and I didn't know, like I didn't, I definitely felt something with that. I mean, the more and more I think about it, the more and more I love it. I think I have the same thoughts as you do on it. I, although I did not love this film, um, I'm not exactly the biggest Kurosawa fan, but there are definitely some a lot of similarities I saw between this film and some of his other films. Um, I definitely agree with you. It's his most subdued film. It's his most silent film, and it's his most uh, reflective film, I feel like. And um, I really love those aspects. And as I uh, think about it more, as I reflect on it more, I love it even more. Chris Hall, again, when it comes to framing, I'll get, the two, I'll get to the, two, the first type of framing in terms of the shot framing. He's just a master. He's one of the best at it. Some of the shots in this film are really beautiful. I do think some of the shots were a bit too dark, I feel like. Maybe that was just mm-hmm. me. But I do think the framing overall was just so, so good. I mean, they had that one shot of the guy playing piano, and it, they. Do you remember that shot? It was oh, just like was he, there was, was like a mirror, mirror, and I was just like, yeah. "How is this? How does this work?" And he pulled the camera back, and you're like, "Oh!" And I thought it was really cool. And uh, they had that shot of when uh, he was on the swing set. The uh, when yeah, that's uh, what Watanabe he was on the swing set, and then he shot it. He like moved the camera, and he shot up. I, I don't know. He shot shot where the camera was like what the object was in front of the swing set but it was some sort of um, yeah yeah, maybe that yeah but it looked really beautiful that's just the framing of the shots now the framing of the story i mean kurosawa and all his films i feel like the framing of the story is something you have to look out for um and then of course he uses a distinct three-act structure he does this a lot um Mm -hmm. this one's a bit different like in high and low which is my favorite i I actually think high and low blows everything else out of the water i love Mm -hmm. high and low a lot uh, that he used a three-act structure in that, and then Rashomon has that structure, yeah. and then uh, Seven Samurai, Samurai as Samurai. well. So he does that a lot in his films, and this one as well. The three-act structure is very much um, each stage of how he kind of deals with his grief. So the mm-hmm. first act is m- a lot. It was focused on, I feel like, the guy he met at the bar and how he is trying to deal with his grief and how that guy helps him. And then the second act is him with his caretaker lady, and yeah. then um, the third act, I won't get into, but that was definitely the most distinct act. The last act, definitely, I feel like 
it uh, got into what Kershaw was gonna trying to get across in terms of bureaucracy um, and so, government overall. It was so like unorthodox and just how it hit you. And you're like, mm-hmm. whoa, that happened? And then the phone goes on for so long. And you're like, I yeah. think that's really interesting. Like, I've never seen that before. And a, a film like this, a story like this, where the yeah. great director chooses to have that event and then have so much after it. Yeah, and I thought the uh, the the themes, especially at the end, I don't think they were they were exactly the the way he got them across wasn't exactly the best. It wasn't exactly v- as visual as he usually does in terms of his storytelling. But I definitely thought it was still very powerful. I mean, in terms of like um, one of the guys at the end of the film, he had a very powerful line. I feel like he said something about if if we make any changes, people will see us as radicals, which I thought is definitely something. I just I, I just thought um, all of what they were talking about at the end was s- stuff we could still apply to government today and um, why individuals try or why they're so stingy to act. And um, I just yeah, thought the me- entire act dealt with that really well. Yeah, just like the normalcy of inaction, the ex- expectation of nothing. Mm-hmm. This is like what you would want. I think it's interesting. I really like how he handled this film almost, like how he, some of the things he talked about and uh, just like the idea that life is so special, that we have like, mm-hmm. this gift and we're so preoccupied by things that might not even matter in the long run. I was so preoccupied by distractions and mm-hmm jobs like that and how we might lose sense of um what it, the gift that we are given we might not be able to use it to the full effect. particularly the main performance by shumura that's how you pronounce his last name correct Shum- I'm, I'm assuming shumura? i'm just okay as- just assume um but um his for particularly his uh facial expressions i thought were really well done yeah uh, I, he actually reminded me of my granddad near the end of his life because i like this character near the end of his life he couldn't really because of his mental state, he couldn't really hold a conversation very well. So a lot of mm-hmm. what, um, for, with my grant, a lot of what we were, w- the way I was able to communicate with him was just by looking at him and looking at his face. Like whenever someone made a joke, I'd look over and him and he'd smile. Same with this character. I feel like a lot of it was just visual because of course he was losing his voice. And uh, I, I definitely felt a deep connection to his character because of that, because a lot of, he was told so much just by uh, him not talking. I think just the way, like, the, there were not very many close-ups um, in this film, but the ones that there were were, like, really powerful. I remember, like, that exactly. one song. The first time he sang that song that he kept repeatedly seeing uh, in, the, like, the bar, where it just is, like, a two-minute or three-minute close-up mm-hmm. of him, and you see his eyes, and you see, like, a tear coming down his face. It's just, it's really moving and really captivating. And there, mm-hmm. I, I've, you know, usually I, when, I wa- when I watch Eshimura, it's, like, he's kind of, like, overtaken by uh, Tishir Mifune, who's really loud and uh, energetic, but to see like mm-hmm. him carry his, uh, his self in this sense on his own, was really just like woke me up like, whoa, he, yeah. he really is really great. It is score time. Jack, what are you going to give? What score oh, out of 10 for Ikaru? Okay, so at the moment, I will give it a 9.4. Okay. But that might go up. That might go down as well. I had something mm-hmm. to reflect. It's a, really, it's a really deep film. There's a lot to think about. Mm-hmm. But I only saw it yesterday. So at the moment, it's a 9.4. That could be such a All right. And my score is going to be a 7.5. Still liked it, just not as much as I uh, was hoping to, but still really liked it. Where would, Just curious, where do you think it would sit among your uh, rankings for your uh, Kurosawa films that you've seen? So I was, okay, so I was thinking about this. Uh, my number one is Sora Rashomon, even though that's a little mm-hmm. controversial. Yeah. My number two is actually wrong. You have to see wrong. Go see Ron. It's oh, really, that's it. that was the one made in the eighties, correct? Yeah, it's like okay, it's yeah. crazy. Um, but it's really great. I think so. I'm having trouble putting this either above or below Seven Samurai. The moment I'm gonna put Seven Samurai above it, but that could be something to change. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like again, like, it's yeah. a film you need to reflect on. So yeah, but I think it, right now it's number four. But, I mean, the fact me, that this film is number four, it's just like just, yeah. Like, for me, yeah, my number one's still higher, higher, higher and low. My number two is uh, Seven Samurai, and then I think this one is number three. I'm I'm trying to remember. I saw Drunken Angel like a month oh, or yeah. two ago. I didn't love that one. That yeah, was okay. One of his but ones. yeah, but I actually do you like his um, samurai or non samurai flicks more. It's really weird to watch Kurosawa mm-hmm. in the modern day. I don't know if you get this. Like, what this is like? Why does why don't his swords and stuff like that? Um, I think I like his samurai films more because they have like more of that mm-hmm. energy and he feels he feels more comfortable with them i guess like it's just yeah. uh, 
reaction like whoa this is modern this is kurosawa it just feels mm -hmm. unnatural like i feel like um for example i know you've seen at least one ozu film that feels yeah. like a, good morning yeah i see yeah. yeah it feels very it feels um very natural in his setting kurosawa as a director i just i guess I associate more with the past i think he implements the past better than he does the modern day mm -hmm. but i also could have seen it like samurai i mean both are, are yeah. amazing oh yeah, yeah. Definitely agree. I'm I'm actually gonna go non samurai unless I I, I I definitely have a lot to see, um uh both non samurai and samurai like Ron for samurai and then I also have to see Bla Bad Sleep Well, uh, Stray Dog, um so on both sides of the aisle I have to see uh I I doubt there's uh, definitely a lot more to see but I'm curious what do you guys what are your favorite Kurosawa films definitely let us know in the comments below remember to like subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified on all our latest cinema content. It has been a pleasure. This has been our classic movie segment. Ciao.